Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe on the SABC News Channel. Zambia is on the brink of defaulting on its foreign debt after it missed a repayment of more than 40 million US dollars last month. It would become the first country in Africa to default on its sovereign debt since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Cash Strip Zambia has long been seen as an example of unsustainable debt. It has repeatedly failed to win a six-month holiday from Eurobond holders who account for about three billion US dollars of Zambia's sovereign debt. Last month, President Edgar Lungu requested for a delay to interest payments until April next year while it negotiates an IMF loan. It would be a better thing to default than to carry on paying the debt. Like the, the crisis of the last um, few years has come from trying to pay a debt that cannot be paid. Africa's biggest copper producer has borrowed heavily from China over the past decade to fund an infrastructure boom. To date, it wants Chinese lenders to reschedule another 225 million US dollars in payments out of a total of 426 million US dollars due this year. But the country is struggling to strike a deal with Chinese creditors that together own around a third of its debt. The bondholders, many of them, never lent Zambia any money. They bought the debt uh, when it, uh, cheaply, and so they stand to make, make huge profits. We estimate between 75% and 250% profits if um, they are paid in full. So they clearly should not be making that profit out of this crisis. Um, they can easily um, write down the debt. The COVID-19 pandemic has aggravated the country's economic woes. Many sub-Saharan African countries have issued euro bonds over the years, amassing debt that is maturing as they grapple with the pandemic. All eyes will be on Zambia, watching how borrowers and creditors deal with the case. Well, for more on Zambia's economic crisis, we're now joined via Zoom by Trevor Hambayi, who's a Zambian financial analyst. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the program. Um, today was a key day, a deadline day. Do we know if Zambia made a decision to default or to try and pay? What happened? Um, so it was a very interesting day for a Friday, um, but... There were three cardinal issues that were in play. Firstly, today was the deadline for the um, bondholders who hold $3 billion of our sovereign debt to make a decision whether they are going to give us um, a debt suspension until April. And that decision was rejected. So they have not offered Zambia the relief. Um, but consequently, our finance ministry issued out a statement, which is basically stating that as a country, we will take the option that we will go into arrears. So in essence, we are saying that they will not pay the, the $42.5 million that was due today. And I think by Monday, we'll officially have fallen into default if we go by that uh, position. So what does defaulting mean? Because... Uh, you can't borrow money going forward. And if somebody does lend you, interest rates are much higher, aren't they? Absolutely. But in terms of default, I think the repercussions or implications to that default are slightly a bit more than just a question of um, our credit rating. So the first impact that will happen is that the credit rating will fall into junk status and we will not be able to secure um, foreign or commercial debt from the international market. But the second aspect is also that the bondholders will be able to exercise their right to recall the $3 billion in its totality if we default on that loan. And basically, if we're not able to meet that $3 billion in repayment as a whole, then a number of things also come into play, which might include them having to um, sell these bonds to uh, voucher funds who might be willing to say, look, we'll wait until we collect from the country. But the other aspect is that this will also put pressure on the country in terms of the, the, um, its capacity to be able to do with international uh, lenders. And this might mean that there will be a depreciation in the local currency, uh, which will basically increase the cost of livelihood for the country. 
So there was this uh, uh, begging bowl to delay, suspend uh, these uh, repayments uh, by six months to April next year. The question is, though, where were they going to get the money in the interim? And I think that is the key issue that the bondholders have raised, that if we do actually give you the six-month um, holiday in which you can you, you cannot pay this debt, where would you find the resources to come by to pay in six months? And one of the key factors that was having to speak to this was the, having, the country having to lock in an IMF-supported uh, package, which the country has failed to do. But the issue around the IMF package has come from the basis that the IMF has been very categoric about what they are saying. The two things that are speaking to this is the rate at which we have contracted the debt. And the second one is that there's also a lot of gray area, the transparency issues around the debt that we have contracted from the Chinese. Nobody really knows what kind of debt we have contracted. Is this commercial? Is this concessional loans? And what is the duration? And that is a key aspect in the IMF having to the table to discuss this. You know, this conflict that there is between the West and the East is that the Chinese, the East doesn't, the, the uh, European funders don't want us to be paying our debt to the Chinese while they are not receiving theirs, which is also the other way on the side that the Chinese also don't want us to be paying the Europeans' debt while they are not receiving theirs. And that is where the impasse comes. But before this happens, we need to have transparency about who holds what debt and into what content. All right. So, Trevor, getting into debt and getting into this situation, it's like putting on weight. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over a period of time. What happened to Zambia? Could we not see? You put yourself on a, on a, a weighing scale. I've done it often. And I've said, oh, I've put on two more kilograms. Zambia surely should have seen that uh, this debt was getting uh, uh, out of hand. Um, absolutely. I mean, it, it is very unfortunate that um, I think everybody, whether it is us from the internal aspects as economists or the external partners who is the IMF or the World Bank, have been advising government on the essence of the fact that we seem to have breached all the economic fundamentals that speak to debt sustainability. And the government was very, very adamant about this. And one of the things is that if you look at, if you go back five years ago, our debt position was around $3.5 billion. And in the last five, six years, we have accumulated that now to $12 billion. But the key aspect about the debt that the country has accumulated is the fact that a very big portion of this is commercial debt, which is really, really very expensive to run as a country. And this is what has brought us into this position. All right. So it's all very well if you borrow money and you can show a house, an asset for it. What has Zambia got to show for the billions in debt that it's got itself into? There are a number of um, areas where we have put the money, which include infrastructure. Um, in the last five years, there's been a, a very high drive for the country to be able to develop infrastructure, which has included um, um, health facilities. They have built probably around 600 health centers. They have built 12 universities. They have also done a lot of road infrastructure, which I think is probably around 8,000 kilometers. Um, we've also been doing a lot of infrastructure around um, hydropower, as well as our airports that we have been constructing. But I don't think it justifies that position, is that mm -hmm. if you're going to borrow, it doesn't matter how you invest it, it must be able to to give you a return to be able to sustain repayment. And that has been the, the challenge. There has also been questions being asked about the transparency and abuse of office in terms of how we have managed these projects. A lot of them are in, this, in the category of being overpriced, that we have put more money than we should have in having to do these projects. And that is also a very big question for the country in terms of when we start to question ourselves as to what we have done with the resources or have we prudently um, utilized these resources that we actually borrowed. All right, and what about the C word, corruption? Has that played a role in uh, the loss of funds to where they should have gone to? Um, 
Absolutely. The, the issue around corruption is, the problem is um, with most African governments, the issues around corruption only come into play after government has left office. While they're still in office, there are always ways in which they protect this having um, the issues around corruption and abuse of office. But the reality is that we are all saying that we think that there are a lot of projects that have been overpriced. And the ones that have been overpriced obviously speak to issues of abuse of office and corruption. It is, it is an, an issue of time. We've had in the recent times what we call an Auditor General's report, which basically does a financial review of how government has spent money. And it has consistently in the last few years been very clear that there is a lot of misappropriation of um, national treasury resources. Mm -hmm. And that speaks to issues around corruption. So I was born on the copper belt in the 60s, and they say that that was the best of times when everybody wanted Zambia's copper. And uh, sadly, over time, the economy structure hasn't changed significantly enough and commodity prices haven't uh, be, remained competitive. So it, what is the light at the end of the tunnel if there is one for Zambia? Because it's not going to be coming from their commodities, is it? Um, well, if you're speaking about the commodity, I think there was a positive turnaround to this. If you look at where we are now, in the last few months, the price for the COP on the international market has been rising. It's heading towards the $7,000 a ton. And the projection are really looking that next year's economic rebound, especially for China, will create um, potential demand for the commodity, and it might go towards the $10,000. So as a country, if we're positioning ourselves strategically, we should have been benefiting. But one of the challenges that the country has has been a very long-standing issue around having to diversify from copper. So in the last 50 years, we really should have been moving away from having to depend on copper as a key uh, revenue uh, generator for foreign exchange. At the moment, we're still generating 70% of our uh, export revenue mm -hmm. from copper, which we haven't done. So as a country, we've got a lot of opportunities that are, lie around um, agriculture and tourism, which we should be developing, as well as alternative energy, which can create uh, value for the country. But we need the right political will to be able to drive this agenda. China, if we've seen the way that uh, this country operates on the continent, um, they come in with gifts and uh, we will help you. But there's always hidden costs that surface later. What has been the cost to Zambia in terms of this relationship that has developed with China over time? So without wanting to speculate, the, the general position in terms of financing is that when you do, um, anybody does actually give you financing. They've also got an agenda as to what their objective is, and you've got yours. You need to be able to meet a balance in between. But the key issue that has been raised, obviously, is that the Chinese have been putting their investment or their loan structures into assets for which have got economic value. And that brings into question the sovereignty of the country. So the Chinese are very strategic in where they have invested. They are the ones that are giving us the resources that have gone towards our hydropower generation. They have put investment into our um, airports. They have put investments into um, the digital space around our communication systems. And these are really very vital uh, infrastructure for the country for another country to hold sovereign over them. And I think that is the question. But we still haven't gotten to the crunch as to what their financing agreements actually do say. And I think that is the issue that has been um, coming around with the IMF, that we need transparency with the financing agreements that you have with the Chinese before we are able to sit down and discuss a package that supports you. All right. We've been speaking at a very macro level at this stage, but let's get down to the man on the street. How is life changing for him? Is he going to be affected by a country that defaults on its uh, debts? So the changes in the country actually have started started a couple of years ago and it's been gradual. And I think we are coming to a very big crossroad right now. So the simple man, what you've been seeing is that because of the debt position that the country has been, um, 
debt servicing has been taking a major portion of our budget from around 27 to around 68 percent now is going towards debt servicing so what is happening is that um this has put pressure on the country's uh, exchange rate which has been pushing the depreciation in the quacha our culture has devalued in the last five years by more than uh, 200 percent from five quacha to a dollar to now where it is at 21 quarter to a dollar. So the cost of living has become very high for a simple Zambian in this country. And one of the things that government has been doing to try and bridge this gap in the financing is to increase taxes on a number of things. So um, averagely, Zambia now pays around 40% more tax than they were paying five years ago. If you're looking at the, in terms of the income uh, levels. So it's really speaking to the fact that this is now affecting the Zambian as it is. So it doesn't matter what you're looking at, whether you're looking at utility uh, bills or you're looking at the price of fuel or the cost of transportation, everything has doubled in price and that is speaking to an average Zambian. All right, Trevor Hambai, we're going to have to leave it there. So I guess the message to the president is the country has put on so much weight of debt it needs to go on a diet. Trevor, thanks very much indeed for joining us. I'll be taking that <laughs> diet with you, Peter. Thank you for the interview. <laughs> thanks, my brother. That's uh, Trevor Hamai, financial analyst, uh, joining us uh, from Lusaka in Zambia. And this is a country, sadly, that's uh, in distress at the moment in terms of debt, defaulting and uh, bloated debt. But uh, is there a way out? We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, the copper price might keep on bouncing and that might give them some relief. But it looks like they've run out of time. We'll have more for you after this. Right